Florida fresh off of a massive commitment from four star corner Ben Hanks to check in on that and everything else going on out there in Gainesville. We got Gators Online's very own Keith Niebuhr. Keith, what went into this commitment for Florida landing Ben Hanks? Well, you know, first of all, they have a need at the position and they've done pretty well at cornerback, especially during the transfer portal season where they picked up Cormani McLean and Jameer Grimsley as transfers. So those were significant. Don't get me wrong, but you still have to build through high school recruiting. And Ben Hanks Jr. is one of the top prospects really in the state of Florida. And, you know, if you're the University of Florida, J.D., you shouldn't have to leave the state of Florida to find a good defensive back, right? And it just so happened that Ben Hanks not only is in the state of Florida, but he's also a Gators legacy. So it worked out perfectly. Uh, this is a guy that uh, maybe a year ago you would have thought Miami's probably the team to beat. Uh, but he, you know, Florida continued to chip away. He built a strong relationship with the new secondary coach, Will Harris. Uh, ben made two visits to Gainesville in June, one for his official visit and another for an unofficial visit. During the official visit, he got that full experience and he really got to bond with the staff and other recruits. When he returned two weeks later for an unofficial visit, he got to see more about how the team operates on a day-to-day -day basis watching them in organized team activities, better known as OTA. So he really got a true feel for the program. So in the end, he picked Florida not just because he was a legacy, but because he felt comfortable there. They had a need for him there. They made him feel like a priority, but also he felt at home in Gainesville. And I think that was significant too. So really, there were a lot of pieces to this puzzle beyond just the fact that he was Gators legacy, JD. You brought up something interesting, Keith, that I want to get some more, uh, some more of your yeah. thoughts on. With the conversation around Florida staff and Billy Napier, and I know people are split on that, how much do you think Florida will push towards signing day when it comes to getting some of these commitments? If they do have a season where they go out yeah. and win seven games against that, is that kind of the strategy there, or where, where do you think stands? Yeah, I, it is. It, you know, the feeling that they feel internally, but as, as most programs do, hey, they're going to have a strong season. The question, J.D., is, how many wins? What's the win total that would get people's attention? Okay, six, seven wins, you're certainly going to save your job, one would have to imagine. But but then do you go into next season on the hot seat? Does it, you know, is it, you know, the problem with getting on the hot seat, and by the way, we don't know that Billy Napier's on the hot seat. Sure. He's only perceived to be on the hot seat. Mm -hmm. However, perception essentially is reality with recruits. But once you get on the hot seat or the perceived hot seat, it's very, it feels like you never get off of it, right? You're, sure. it, there's always that cloud hanging over your head. So what is the win total that would impress recruits? We think eight or more probably would impress a lot of these guys, particularly given Florida's schedule, which includes eight teams ranked in the Associated Press preseason top 25. You win eight games or more against that schedule, and you're going to eliminate a lot of the question marks about your, your stability as a staff, uh, but also – you're telling recruits, hey, you're on an upward trend. That's a good record against that schedule, a very good record against that schedule. You're doing things the right way. You're moving in the right direction. Uh, and we've had a lot of recruits say, hey, I'm going to keep an eye on this Florida team this season. I want to see what they do. I like this staff. I just want to know that they're going to be there. So it could lead to some dividends in that late part of the cycle. You know, how many guys could they flip? How many big name guys could they land? We don't know. But at that point, if you just land three or four more guys, it's going to really complete a class. It's not like you're going to flip a dozen guys. It's not going to happen. But two or three or four guys that maybe aren't looking like they're going to be part of the class today are part of the class in December, then you've done a good job. Then you've put together another top 12, top 15 type of class. And, and again, that continues that upward trend for the program. And if I'm making a case for Florida, if they do go out and win seven, eight yeah. football games, using football math, you're like, hey, I know how this looks on paper, but like put us in the Big 12, see what our record is. Put us in the ACC sure. and see what seven and five against that schedule looks like in that conference. I think you probably find yourself in the conference title game. Neither here nor you know, there. Yeah, well, I was going to say, J.D., last thing. You know, uh, I thought that a lot of kids, I've always said, hey, your record is your record, right? I mean, I get it that a schedule is tough and not tough, but to a recruit, your record is your record. But – just in the last week, I've had multiple recruits say, hey, they're playing a tough schedule. So either they're following it closely or the Florida staff has hammered it into their head. Hey, they're <laughs> playing a hard schedule, but they are paying attention to that. And I think that's a good thing. So if they look at an eight and four, eight and five, seven and five, they're realizing that that would be maybe nine, 10 wins in another conference. And, you know, you can't always ex assume recruits follow things as closely as fans and media people. But it seems like in this case, they might be.
Keith, we hit on the secondary a little bit. What's next for Florida, maybe outside of the defensive back position? Well, look, right now, if you're looking at what area of, of the recruiting class is the strongest, I think you have to point to wide receiver. You've got two on three top 100 national recruits committed at the receiver position. One of them is Vernell Brown, the third, who is nearing a fifth star in the on three industry rankings. And the other is Joshua Moore a four-star recruit from Miami, who we also have, I think, number 57 in the country for on three. So these are two elite players. Josh Moore, 6'4", Vernell Brown's in that 5'10 and a half, 5'11 range, are different types of receivers. Florida would like to take two more receivers in this class if they can, and they're zeroing in on four-star receiver Nashawn Montgomery of Miami Central. He's going to announce on August 25th. During that open week, that one week that wasn't dead in the middle of the summer where kids could recruit campuses, college campuses, Nashawn Montgomery visited Florida and only Florida, and he didn't just go there once, J.D. He was in Gainesville twice in a one-week span. Florida is trending. Florida is trending big. And all signs point toward Nashawn Montgomery picking the Florida Gators on August 25th. That would give you three high-level receivers in this class to go along with your young quarterback who you signed last year, DJ Lagway. Sometimes people think that you're always gonna get those receivers, elite receivers in the same class with the elite quarterback, but oftentimes you get them the next year. They, they hear about them so much, then they get to see them a little bit either in spring practice, OTAs, or during games in the fall, and then they say, hey, I wanna go play with that guy. And so I think that's what's happening because all three of these young men have mentioned a connection that they built one with DJ Lagway and two, they've seen with their own eyes at practice what all the hype is about. So Nashawn Montgomery would be the next guy to watch. He's an outstanding player, dominant in seven on seven season. And his coaches at Miami Central think that is going to translate in his first season at Central, I should point out. They think that's going to translate to the football field on Friday nights. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what DJ Lagway looks like this year. Hoping he has some sort of role for the Gators this fall, but Games are being played now, so it's going to be a blast. From, the, from Gators Online, the best in the business, Keith Nieper. Keith, thanks so much for your time, man. Thanks, Shady. Well, you've made it to the end of today's video, but there's hundreds more videos on the On3 Recruits channel for you to check out. And also, while you're here, hit subscribe.